Good morning and welcome. We're glad that you joined us for worship. Today we observe Palm Sunday and we begin Holy Week. As we continue our safe and measured return to in-person worship at Zion, we want to point out that we will continue to provide the online opportunities for worship that we have provided for this past year and more. So this Holy Week, on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, we will have services online only at 7 o'clock p.m. on Monday, Thursday, and 7 o'clock p.m. on Good Friday. Next Sunday, we will have online Easter festival services at 6.30 a.m. for our sunrise worshipers, and also at 8.30 and 11 o'clock online Easter Sunday. We will have one in-person Easter Sunday worship service at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary with drive-through communion to follow. In addition to communion for that service, drive-through communion on Easter Sunday from 11 o'clock to 11.30. In-person worship services will continue as long as it is safe to do so uh, on Sunday mornings in April and going forward at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Online services will continue at 8.30 and 11 as we have been providing them and also available 24-7. We're grateful for every opportunity you can join us to hear God's word and receive his grace and blessing in Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior. Again, welcome to worship. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in speaking responsibly a portion of Psalm 118. Open to me the gates of righteousness. That I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. And he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is the Old Testament reading, Zechariah 9, 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of, blood of the blood of my covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death, death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem in Bethphage, in Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie, untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and it will be sent back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied to the door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing around there said to them, what are you doing, untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus has said, had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread, spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread their leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem, and he went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, everyone. What a great day to celebrate. Happy Palm Sunday. Let's take a second to think about the very best day of your life. Maybe your wedding day, or the day that your child or grandchild was born, or the day that you just got some great news that changed your life for the better. I am nearly positive for that my parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, family, all of those people that that day, of course, was the day I was born. Just kidding. But let's go back and think of your very best day. Now let's take a second and think of the very worst day of your life. Maybe a loved one dying, or losing a job, losing love, or whatever comes to mind. Take a second to feel those feelings. The great joy, the probably the flutter of your heart when you think about that great day. 
and the deep pit in your stomach that comes from the worst. Did anyone notice that tears may actually in some way or another be associated with both of those days? That's interesting to think about. Now imagine those two days just being five days apart. Palm Sunday is a glorious day, praising the Lord, laying down palm leaves and clothes on the ground to show how important this king is to the world. And because this happened 2,000 years ago, we know what happened five days later. That worst day arrived for Jesus. Worse than any of us have ever had, hanging on the cross and sacrificing his own life for our sins. But again, as these time traveler people that we are now, we know what happened three days after that too. An even better day than that first great day. What a week. <laughs> now let's bring this to the here and now. How do we learn how to live today from something that happened so long ago? Let's go back to our own very best day. If you spent that day thinking about that, that best day, thinking about that worst one to come, it most likely would not have been the best day ever. Lucky for us, that's where God comes in. God is there to take away those burdens, to allow us to enjoy those great days without the constant fear of the bad ones, to be there for us on the bad days, to allow us to com be comforted and assured that this too shall pass. Psalm 55, 22 states, Cast your burden up to the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never allow the righteousness to be shaken. There is a plan in place for you that is set in place by God. He has gifted us with the power of free will to make educated, intentional, and powerful choices in the present time. But he's always there to guide us if we look to him for clarity. We're able to do this in its most effective form when we do this as the Lord commands us, truly casting the burden of fear, unsureness, and the unknown of the future into the Lord's hands trusting that his plan will take us through the good and those bad days. And I saved the coolest part for last. Although our best days not be the, may not be the same as Jesus, riding on the donkey and being honored and being glorified, and I pray that no one's worst day is as painful and treacherous as that of Jesus, our very last great day will be just the same as his. For all that believe, we'll be able to share in that final glory that Jesus paid the ultimate price for, his death on the cross. So always remember to enjoy those great days and remember that more good days are coming than the, when you were in the bad ones. And to thank God for both of those because he put us in this place for a reason. Now let's all bow our heads and pray together. Dear God, thank you for giving us days of celebration and reminding us that even in hard times, you have given us the gift of life everlasting to look forward to. Please keep us safe in the journey through this life, allowing us to work together for your glory to be able to show others your love, remembering that we will, that we, that the greatest day is always to come. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
dearly loved and precious children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today at Zion, we celebrate with the Christian Church down through the ages and around the world, Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. It is, of course, the most solemn and somber week in the entire church year. It is the week that we particularly remember Jesus' suffering and death for the sins of the world. It was quite literally the week that changed the world. It is certainly significant that three of the four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, devote an entire one-third of their gospel accounts to this week alone. And the fourth gospel writer, John, devoted no less than one-half of his entire gospel account to this single week in Jesus' life. And that week, that holy week, began with this day. Holy week began with the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Naturally, all four gospel writers record this event in their gospels, each of them with their own distinct details. Today we look at Mark's account. Day began with a plan. It didn't just happen haphazardly or unfold without any preparation. It began as Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, with him sending two of his selected disciples on ahead of him to find and secure a means of transportation for him to enter triumphantly into the city. They found, according to Jesus' instructions, a colt in which no one had ever ridden before and brought it to him. He sat on the colt, and as he began his journey to and into the holy city, people began to gather. Some took off their coats and their cloaks and placed them on the road in front of Jesus. Others left the road and went off into the fields and cut leafy branches from the trees on either side of the road and placed those branches down on the road in front of Jesus, perhaps as a way to keep the dust of the road from flying up into Jesus' face and eyes as the colt that he was riding on trotted along. It was sort of a first century red carpet welcome fit for a king, indeed for the king of kings. As Jesus rode along, the crowds that were gathering began to make noise, maybe a little murmuring and chatter at first, and then the hubbub became louder and more excited. They chanted and they cried out. Mark tells us that those who went before and those who followed after We're shouting. This is exactly what the prophet Zechariah described when he wrote in our Old Testament reading for today. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Mark goes on to tell us that there was one word in particular which the people were shouting over and over again. It was a word packed with messianic hope and great expectations. Interestingly enough, the Greek New Testament does not translate this originally Aramaic and Hebrew word, into a Greek word. But instead, the New Transliterates 
each letter of the Aramaic and Hebrew word into Greek letters. We've done the same in our English translations. That word was transliterated, Hosanna. It literally means save now. The crowds were hoping and praying and shouting that Jesus who entered the city that day would save them now. It was, of course, primarily a political expectation. With hundreds of years of theology built into it, an expectation that when Messiah comes, Messiah will restore the Jewish nation as an independent state on earth, free from the dominion of others, free from the oppression of others, free to be and enjoy all of the blessings that God gives in an entirely earthly and worldly sense. It was theological, perhaps, but not theologically accurate. The crowds were hoping and praying and shouting that Jesus would put down those hated Romans that ruled over them and give the Jewish nation freedom to be their own people and their own kingdom. And so they shouted and prayed and waited and expected, Hosanna, save now, King Jesus. But before the end of that fateful week, those shouts of Hosanna had faded and morphed into cries to crucify him. For it became clear soon enough that Jesus had come into the holy city, had entered into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday to begin that holy week, not to overthrow the hated Romans, but even to submit to them and to die a sacrificial death in our place for our sins and for the sins of all the world. Jesus came to rescue us from a far greater kingdom than that of the Romans. He came to rescue us from a kingdom of darkness, from a kingdom of sin, from a kingdom of guilt and shame, to redeem us by his precious blood and to save us and enable us to live as children and subjects of the kingdom of God, washed, cleansed, sanctified, rescued and redeemed, restored and renewed as the new creation that God in Christ calls us and enables us by his grace to be. That means that because of what Jesus exactly came to do, because of his suffering and death and glorious resurrection on our behalf, because he secured our redemption by his blood and established our eternal identity by his resurrection, that original Palm Sunday cry, that political plea to save now, is transformed into a glorious proclamation of faith in the God who has saved us for all eternity and indeed will continue to provide all that we need for this body and life as we make this earthly journey through this life to life eternal. Save now. Hosanna becomes a cry of praise to the Lord who has redeemed us and provides for us, the Lord who has saved us and protects us, the Lord who has taken care of our greatest need and promises to provide for all of our other needs as well. So we incorporate that Hosanna into our liturgy, into our traditional communion liturgy when we sing, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Our Hosannas become a cry of praise, a shout of thanksgiving, a life lived to the glory of God in the service of others. May the Lord strengthen our faith and restore the joy of our salvation this day that through this holy week ahead of us and beyond Easter Sunday, each and every day we may be a life shouting God's praises, a heart singing Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, Show to us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold this world in your order. Preserve the church and the proclamation of your word against all enemies. Bless our homes, that all who dwell in them may serve one another faithfully and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office, that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of our people and be a blessing to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in remembrance, O Lord, those who are anxious, distressed, or in any need of strength. Gently guide them, and by your great goodness bring them into the way of peace and truth. Let the light of your truth shine on those who do not know you, that their hearts may be turned toward you, and so find hope and life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you those who are facing challenges in health and those who are recovering, including Nancy Keep, Eleanor Tyson, and Tom Poole. Grant them the comfort of your presence and bless them with healing and strength according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.